Let's talk about net change theorem, which has something to do, I think, too, with uh, the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. If we have an derivative integrated from a to b with respect to x, this is simply equal to the antiderivative, let me make sure I get this right, f of b minus f of a. So we've talked about this in Calc 1. This is called a net change theorem as well. If we take this equation and add f of a to both sides and look at this in terms of f of b, we can also think of this as f of b equaling some initial value, f of a, plus the integral of the rate of change. That is, the integral of f prime of x dx, that's the rate of change, remember the first derivative is the rate of change, from a to b. Okay, so it's just a different way of thinking about it, but it's the exact same thing. Let's look at what happens when we evaluate this with a graph. So here I have a graph of f of x. Remember, this is f of x, not f prime of x. If, however, I'm asked to solve the integral from negative 3 to 2 of f prime of x, that's simply equal to f of b minus f of a. So being very careful that we plug b and a in correctly, because I, this is now my second time of doing this video because I messed it up. f of 2, if we read that from the graph, it looks like that's equal to 9. And f of negative 3, that gives us a value of 6. So the integral from negative 3 to 2 of f prime of x is 9 minus 6, or 3. All right, what if instead of a graph, we're given a function? In this case, we're given the function that's velocity, and we want to know the net displacement. Well, if you remember the relationship between velocity and, let's see, acceleration, I think if we had, let's see, our relationships between velocity and distance, and acceleration and velocity and distance, were this. The velocity is equal to derivative of the distance with respect to time. Acceleration, that's the derivative of the velocity, which is then the second derivative of the distance. If we go back to the fundamental theorem of calculus again, or what we were calling now the net change theorem, the integral of vx dx from a to b is then equal to x of b minus x of a, which is in fact the displacement. So because the velocity is the derivative of the um, distance, if we integrate the velocity, then what we end up is the displacement. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll be taking the integral from 0 to 8 of 5t minus 4 dt, and we'll end up with 5 halves t squared minus 4t evaluated at 0 and 8. And you can see why um, if you can't do the basic integrations, Calc 2 is going to be a tough class. So that's why we're doing this right up front. And if we go ahead and do the arithmetic, we find that this is equal to 128. If I was given this in terms of meters per second, that is my velocity, that means this would be meters. And that is how far the particle moved from the time t equals 0 to t equals 8. This question seems awfully similar, but it's it's a little different. A particle moves along a line with a velocity v of t equals negative 4 plus 4, negative 4t plus 4. Find the total distance the particle travels over the time interval 0 to 3. Before, we were asked the net displacement. That's different than the total distance traveled. To see that, let me pull up a graph. The problem is when we talk about integrating, when we talk about things below the x-axis, that ends up being a negative value. And the displacement takes into account the positives and negatives, but if we want the total distance traveled, we're going to unfortunately have to break this integration up into two separate pieces. Before I get carried away with the math, I want to explain what I mean by this total distance versus net displacement. 
if I ran to the mailbox and then ran back, my net displacement is zero. I end up back where I started. But the distance I traveled, well, that is actually a positive value. So when I'm going in a positive direction, we consider that positive. When I'm moving in a negative direction, in order to find the distance or the actual distance traveled, we're going to take the absolute value of that, which means if it's a negative value, to find the absolute value of it, we'll negate that. So the pink triangle that I have up here, that goes from 0 to 1. That's a positive value because it's above the x-axis. And I'm not going to go through and um, go step by step through the math here. You can pause the video and do this yourself. So um, what I want to focus on instead is how we're setting this up. The orangish yellowish triangle that is all negative because it's below the x-axis. So when I do that integration, I'm going to negate that. So that's why you see that negative sign out front. And when I do that, you should always end up with a positive value when it's something like this. So I did find I ended up with an area, I'm sorry, with a distance of 8 in the yellow area and 2 in the pink area. So to find the total distance traveled, I merely add those two pieces together. If I had not taken care of that negative sign up front, if I had not, if I was looking at just net displacement, I would have gotten 2 minus 8, or a, a net displacement of negative 6. And again, that's not what this question was asking for. So we could ask this type of question with different words. We could say a motorboat uses the gasoline at the rate of. As soon as you think, let's hear the words at the rate of or rate of change, that means you're talking about the derivative. So the rate of change of gasoline is 5 minus negative t to the third power gallons per hour. How much gas is used if a motorboat is started at t equals 0 and goes for 2 hours? We're going to set this up the same way that we just did. This is how I set it up. The integral from 0 to 2 of 5 minus t cubed dt. We'll integrate that and I'm not going to go through the integration this time. I'm just going to tell you it works out to be not 10, 6. 6 gallons of gasoline. But all we're going to do is the same kind of integration that we've done before.